Well, hi, my friends. Good to be with you. Today is Thursday, the 19th of May, and we're looking at the names of God. So remember, there's so far, and these are the formal names of God. So far, we have Elohim, which means relational love or love and relationship. We have Jehovah or Yehovah, depending on its pronunciation, uh, means the same thing. It means um, the righteous God of judgment or righteous judgment. And this one we're now looking at is El Shaddai, which means uh, God Almighty, the God of infinite power. So let's look at El today, the first word in this compound uh, name of God. El is the word that's generally used in Semitic languages, including Hebrew. Uh, this is the one, this is the language which the Hebrew Bible is written in, and um, we call it the Old Testament. El means uh, quite generically God. And El in the Old Testament is used to indicate God or gods that may not be the God of Israel. So even in um, many old religions, El is used generally to say God. And so when we see the word El and we translate it God, it may or may not be referring to the God of, uh, as it stands alone, the God of Israel. So that's why most of the time when El is used, there's uh, it's compound words, uh, another word attached to it, like Shaddai or Elion or one of the others that we'll talk about down the road. And um, then that would help give us better understanding that this is the God of Israel, El Shaddai, um, God Almighty. El also can be translated in the Hebrew as power or might, and oftentimes is translated quite literally power or might, but mostly it's translated God, or if it's in the plural form, God's. So in Genesis, we have God first uh, revealing himself as the one who is in loving relationship. We talked about that in the Trinity, <clears throat> and then by his grace with us, loving relationship. But God also is righteous. He is truth. So Jehovah helps us understand God and brings in some tension that God is both love and now righteous judgment. When we start talking about God, and remember, God is revealing himself by these names as the writer of Genesis, or more likely writers of Genesis, not just Moses, um, write, uh, God re as they write further, God reveals himself all the more. So L means generically, God. Now, L and uh, as uh, a standalone and with its compounds comprise most of the rest of Genesis. This is how God begins to uh, reveal himself. So through Genesis verses or verses, uh, chapters one through about 12, 13, 14. God uses Elohim or Jehovah or Elohim, Jehovah. After chapter 14, when God begins to work with Abram, who is renamed Abraham, God starts to refer to himself as El in most cases. Um, El Shaddai or El uh, Israel, uh, the God of Israel, or uh, El Elo, uh, Elohim. Uh, which means uh, God, all, uh, God who is mighty. So there's a, there's a shift here. And so we might ask why. 
And I think the main reason is because God, as he begins to now specifically work with Israel. So remember, um, God was the God of creation and the universe and of all people. God chose then Abram, then later named Abraham, to birth this nation, this chosen people, this chosen race, this uh, chosen community. Uh, by the way, they're still chosen. But he begins then his specific ministry in, through, and with Israel in the person of Abram. So I think what God is doing here is saying that the God of Israel is the same God who is creator and uh, the God of the universe, the triune, but monotheistic faith of Israel would proclaim now El is the God of Israel. This is a big shift for Genesis and uh, a good reminder that the God of Israel is creator God, is the God of the universe, is the God that we find in Genesis chapters 1 through 12, 13, and then 14 through 50. And God wants to make clear that this God of Israel is not a new God, but has been the God of people and creation since the very beginning. All right. Side note, when you're reading in your Old Testament, let's say, for instance, you go to um, Genesis chapter whatever, uh, one or two and three, or um, uh, even, you know, 12, all the way through the end of the book. When you see the translation say, uh, the Lord and uh, all of those uh, letters in Lord are capitalized, typically that's denoting uh, a formal name of God. So in the English, we don't read Jehovah. We don't read Elohim. Uh, we don't read El. In the English, our translators has, have helped us a little bit. And in fact, we don't even read Yahweh. And we're going to get to Yahweh down the road here. But uh, when the word Lord is all capitalized, there's usually another name, a proper name, Elohim, uh, Jehovah. Yahweh um, behind that. Now, when the word Lord is not capitalized, it's just um, the word in Hebrew that means Lord and not a formal or proper name of God. And that word is a direct translation of the word Adonai, which means Lord. It's not a name that God uses to refer to himself. And Lord, Adonai in the Hebrew can mean all kinds of lords. It doesn't mean necessarily the Lord God. So it's just a trick of Bible reading in our English. When the word Lord is in all capitals, it usually indicates almost always uh, Elohim, Jehovah, or Yahweh, a, a proper noun. Um, that God's used to refer to himself, because we don't read that in, in, in the English. And that's a shame in that, uh, without further study, we don't get the flavor of who God is. But now with L, God, which is almost always translated God, we find that um, in its compound form, like with El Shaddai, we get a better understanding of who God is. This is the uh, El Shaddai, the God Almighty. Uh, or uh, this is El Elohim. This is uh, God uh, who is um, uh, of all might, or a God of Israel, or um, a God of the universe. So again, God, as he reveals himself in these names, 
uh, he uses to refer to himself as God, he's helping us understand further who he is. And really, that's the point. That's why we're studying the names of God after all, so that we can get to know him better. Okay, a bit uh, academic today. Um, I hope that's okay. It's always fun to be in God's word together, no matter how it goes. So let's pray. God, we're grateful for this day. Ask that you would bless us in it and into the rest of it. Help us to understand, Jesus, that this is why we read your word, why we study together. Help us to understand uh, more of who you are. The God of loving relationships, the God of righteous judgment, the God almighty, the God of might, the God of power. God, we only understand you in part, but we understand enough to know you and to claim you as our Lord, our God our might and our strength. May we do just that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to be with you, friends. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.